everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to this lecture, which will be about antiseptics, disinfectants, and soap products or products for hand hygiene. I'm, first of all, I, I, I forgot among the objectives to note what has this to do with antimicrobial resistance. Um, of course, you know that use of uh, these infectants, antiseptics, um, and uh, hand hygiene products has an influence on the spread and antimicrobial resistance. And these products, they are really booming now, and there's more and more use of them. Um, I will explain you in the final slide. Oh, no, it's in the final slide, something about the relation between antimicrobial resistance and resistance to these products. But I think one of my objectives is also that you learn um, that antiseptics, disinfectants are not perfect and that they even can be causes of bacterial, they can be contaminated with bacteria and they can also be themselves causes of hospital outbreaks and transmission of multidrug resistant organisms. I'm not an expert in all these products, but I would like you to find your way in the basic products. Know the difference between antiseptics, disinfectants, and the different soap products. Know particularly the spectrum of microorganisms that are inactivated by these products, and already retain from now that Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, the real hospital um, multidrug resistant hospital bacteria, escape to many, most even antiseptics and disinfectants. Understand that applications, um, the applications, but also the limitations of antiseptics and disinfectants, mainly they are inactivated by organic material, light, contamination, and I would also say something about what we call the biofilm, which shields bacteria. Know the risk factors and the practices contributing to bacterial contamination and how to mitigate the risk. And know for those who will be in the Infection Prevention Control Committee, know about the best practices of handling antiseptics, disinfectants, and soap products. It seems a lot, uh, but I will make it simple so that we can move on smoothly. First, I would like to give some definitions and list some product names and discuss them a little bit, gave them their place starting with the WHO Essential Medicine list. I will explain what you can expect, the spectrum of the um, um, uh, products, the limitations, and how to handle them in the hospital, and what, how to procure, to manufacture, the, to distribute, to dilute them in the hospital, the distribution and the care for the water and the containers and then finally the relation with uh, AMR. We will not discuss, and this is the slide from the lecture from Anne yesterday, we will not discuss disinfectants used for high level disinfection and like glutaraldehyde, formaldehyde. Um, we will not discuss this, we will only discuss the um, uh, 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 disinfectants used for environmental cleaning, disinfection, and the products for uh, hand hygiene. I will focus on the products and not, for instance, on the procedures, how to clean. I've seen that, that Anne uh, is dealing with uh, 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 cleaning and probably also with the hand hygiene uh, uh, procedures. And I will not talk about the use of antiseptics in wound care. I will um, I talk them in their use for uh, hand hygiene or in their use, for instance, to prepare for 
uh, venipuncture over surgical intervention. I put some um, literature on, 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 on uh, Moodle, uh, this booklet. It's on, in English on the Moodle, but is also available in French, even if in, in a more recent uh, edition in French. It's good for starters. You, you can use it for teaching and also for procedure writing. It is good for antiseptics disinfectants. It is not really updated for other points in, in uh, hospital prevention and uh, control. So take, take a little bit care. For instance, a chapter about waste management is a little bit outdated. Uh, Anne already showed this one. This is a good um, guideline for environmental cleaning, mainly uh, already at the advanced level and, and inspired by US CDC. And they, they, they have some sl slightly different uh, procedures or use of products compared to Europe. These are WHO um, and reference documents. It's just for you to know they exist, to use them for lookup, and because these are really this is really advanced literature if you want to retrieve um, uh, data. And I put two papers about the relation of antimicrobial resistance and resistance to antiseptics, just for your information and retrieval. There's one paper of Rutala, which describes the high level disinfectants and also the newcomers and the more technical advanced and uh, disinfectant procedures. For instance, for terminal cleaning, uh, uh, I told you about the fact that people who reside in it, for instance, in a room where previously patient with MRSA was staying, they can be infected. A terminal cleaning of the rooms is important and there are new products or let's say applications for it. You can find this in the paper of uh, Rotella. And all detailed information of what I will tell you about low level disinfectants is in another paper from Rotella who also described the approach of a bundle approach for the introduction implementation of antiseptics. Definitions. First, antiseptics, they inhibit growth of microorganisms that are applied on living tissues, are used in the hand hygiene, in surgery, antiseptics, sep uh, uh, sepsis, and good to know that there are products based on alcohol, which are called tincture among the antiseptics, and there are water-based products, and they will have a different vulnerability, susceptibility to bacterial contamination, as I will tell you later. These infectants inhibit microorganisms, but are used for application on surfaces and objects which are called in the literature fomites. Fomites is a Latin word meaning inanimate surfaces. And so uh, 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 all surfaces, but also medical instruments and non-medical instruments. And we are talking about the low level disinfectants which are used for cleaning and decontamination uh, of the surfaces. Then there are the products used for hand hygiene. On top, the alcohol-based hand rub or the gel, which can be complemented with an antiseptics, which has, as Anne already showed, a better performance than soap products, and soap products can be plain or without antibiotics, or they can be medicated, antiseptic or antimicrobial. That means that antiseptic products are added to the soap. Soap can be liquid or can be in a bar. And 
for hospitals, bar soap is not recommended, mainly because in the 60s from the last centuries, people showed that bar soap can easily be uh, contaminated with bacteria. Commercially prepared soap contains preservatives, but this is not always the case. Preservatives are in fact low dose antiseptics that inhibit bacterial growth in the soap. Detergents are comprised in the soaps and are products that allow suspending of fat in water. They can be anionic, cationic, they can be both. Anionic detergents are what we call the, the soap. Cationic, we will show later, are quaternary ammonium compounds disinfectants. And here you see, there's a, again a slide from Andet in the IPC framework, antiseptics and disinfectants, soap products have a huge place. And they are really very um, uh, 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 important in the standard precautions, also in the transmission-based uh, precautions. If we go to the model list, WHO model list of essential medicines, we see there are among the disinfectants and antiseptics only seven products listed. The hand wrap, chlorhexidine, chlorine, chloroxylenol. When I speak this, you do not know what it is about. When I say it is Dettol, probably there is a bell ringing. Eh? This is Dettol. Ethanol eh, is the um, two carbon alcohol, glutaraldehyde, and the povidone iodine. Eh? These are only a few are listed. But more products are in use. What about the spectrum? Um, I think two days ago we discussed the gram positive cocci, yeah? small cocci, staphylococcus, longer change streptococci, the enterobacterialis, and this is a salmonella and the non fermentative gram-negative rods. These are the um, 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 bacteria. We said, look here, think about water, think about, in the case of Acetobacter, dry environment, and think here, Enterobacterialis, about um, um, a, a patient uh, 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 colonization. Viruses, I need to introduce viruses here because it's important for the spectrum of the uh, products. And there are different ways to categorize viruses and the most simple is to speak about the lipid envelope virus, the ones who are enveloped and the one without envelope, naked viruses. This are here the respiratory tract viruses. This, hepatitis, HIV, are the blood transmittable viruses. These are enteroviruses here too, with no envelope, which can, here, these viruses, they can stay alive in the environment very long, are resistant to heat, are resistant to dry conditions and can are far more resistant to viruses with a lipid envelope. Detergents, soap can already dissolve the lipid envelope. So HIV is susceptible, very susceptible, in fact, to these infectants, antiseptics. SARS-CoV virus 2, yeah? all the uh, 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 viruses which are enveloped. If we make a kind of um, table with increasing resistance, 
to undo heat, ultraviolet light, disinfectants, and so on, we see that the envelope viruses are very susceptible. Gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria are increasingly resistant. Here are the mycobacteria. Here are the non-enveloped viruses. The protozoa are Giardia, Bacillus, Clostridium are the spores. They are very resistant. So if we translate it in uh, bacteria and viruses, we have here HIV, um, the enveloped viruses, example Stavorius, E. coli, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Rota, noroviruses, Giardia, Cryptosporidium, and Neoclostridium, and Bacillus. This is the, the general way, uh, let's say, of ordering them, but there is one problem here. The hospital acquired bacteria, and I put here as example the Pseudomonas, but also the Klebsiella, which is Enterobacteriales, but the hospital types, they have acquired resistance to many of the disinfectants antiseptics. So they are Although they are uh, uh, gram negative, they are not the level of the E. coli. They are here more at the level of rotavirus and hepatitis, hepatitis A virus. So pretty resistant. Oh, and then here, this arrow points to Clostridium bacillus. Remember the Clostridium tetani, neonatal tetanus, means they can survive heat, they can survive uh, 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 also non-optimal uh, sterilization. Yep. Okay, the other point we have to know, um, Gael, you need to, 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 to write down if you want that I need to correct a little bit the slide 16, because I copied it from the alcohol product. Just write correct slide 16. And the spectrum of the products, we need to remove here part of the information from the uh, Zoom, because it's just blocking the titles of my... Um, PowerPoint. Um, okay, I see here now the, the title. This is, for instance, the spectrum of alcohol products. Hmm? Alcohol products, like the alcohol hand wrap, will kill if you apply it. HIV Stavorius in 10 seconds needs to have one minute to kill the naked viruses and pseudomonas, but it kills them. Hmm. This is the chlorine. Chlorine uh, will kill all bacteria here, still Pseudomonas and Klebsiella, and also has what we call an unexpected paradoxal effect against spore-forming organisms. That's the reason why for Clostridium difficile, uh, for instance, the Chlorine is really a product of choice. Chlorine has a good spectrum. Alcohol, if you apply it long enough, has a good spectrum. All the other products we will talk about, all the other ones, all the other antiseptics that we will discuss, all the other low-level disinfectants have a small spectrum which comes hardly up to mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, Pseudomonas klebsiella, hospital-acquired bacteria, are resistant to many, most antiseptics, and most low-level disinfectants. Another point is that 
biofilm shields bacteria from antiseptics and these infectants. And what is a biofilm? A biofilm means that bacteria will go down and attach to the surface, the surface of a plastic container, the surface of a stethoscope, the surface of the keyboards, for instance, they will attach, they will start to grow a little bit and they produce extracellular proteins and carbohydrates, which comes a layer which protects them. This is what we call a biofilm. A biofilm you can see by the naked eye, but sometimes it's so small that you don't see it. And in the biofilm, bacteria are up to thousand times less susceptible to antiseptics in these infected. And this is, plays a lot, a big role in uh, um, the hospital. Remember here the patient, my student, with the contact lenses and with this box. This box is dirty at the outside, it's a biofilm, but also at the inside, which is apparently clean, there is a small layer of debris attached to the plastic. And if you scratch, you can feel it. And in this layer, bacteria can easily survive and resist to antiseptics. This is another example. This year, the tube, the polyvinyl chloride tube of an um, aspiration pump. And here is the end. I put the swap into the tube and up to here, and I rotated it. And here you see that it is brown colored. This brown color is the inside, is up to here. It's a biofilm. This makes that bacteria can survive uh, 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 the disinfectant. Tubing, sooner or later, will have a biofilm. So wherever you buy or you maintain such equipment, think about buying also, and it's not that expensive, enough PVC uh, uh, tubing to replace them from time to time. Questions so far? No. Okay. So on the chat, no questions. No, Jan. On the chat, no questions. No. Okay. So let's. Oh. Jan, I have you muted. Sorry. Oh, you want to unmute? Yeah, you you okay, can. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you had. <laughs> Maybe there's an explanation for it. Okay. Chlorine. Chlorine. Um, I think the French speaking among you will not use the word chlorine. They will use the word chavel, the same as chlorine. Chlorine means hypochloric acid. And remember, it has a good spectrum against the uh, Klebsiella pseudomonas even. Also for here, you see the picture of a Clostridium difficile. Uh, uh, colitis uh, with ulcer, with the spore forming here, this, this, this halo is a spore, spore forming uh, Clostridium difficile has an effect on uh, spore forming organisms. And this is anthrax, Bacillus anthracisa, you know from the, uh, I can call skin or intestinal infections is also a bioterrorist um, 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 bacteria. Chlorine, you can have it in liquids, in powder, in taps, 
in granules even, and it is hypochloric acid, which release oxygen, in fact. If it starts to work in its chemical way, and oxygen is toxic. It's widely used. Um, it, and you can soak uh, instruments in chlorine. You can use chlorine for surface de 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 decontamination, but it leaves a residue, meaning that you should any time rinse afterwards, also because it's corrosive to metals. And another thing is it has a very short half-life. Um, most guidelines, but there's a little bit difference between the guidelines, most guidelines will tell you that you need to prepare it each day or at least one in two days because it, it is quickly inactivated. Um, just for your information, and um, you can always retrieve it here. Um, it's not uh, it's not my intention that you know how to 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 calculate all these things, but you chlorine has different ways of um, expressing the concentration can be constant, uh, expressed as parts per million, as mostly if you use it for disinfection of drinking water, as percentages or as degrees. And this is a little bit confusing. Degrees is the French-speaking country way of expressing it. This is the chloromatic degrees. And it is mostly used for the products Eau de Javel, which are the typical French products. One degree is 0 0.3 percentage, okay? And 1% is 10 gram per liter. And mostly the Eau de Javel is 15 degrees, approximately 5%. Bleach is the way to use it in US or uh, English speaking countries. The more your um, 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 uh, the more chlorine is concentrated, the higher the efficacy, but it stops at five percent. Eh? Five percent is the undiluted form. Zero point five percent, sometimes zero point one percent is used for is used for decontamination. This is a vial from Cambodia. What is the concentration? Sodium hypochlorite here, available chlorine, 6% weight per weight, that means uh, volume per volume, in fact, eh, for chlorine, 6%. So we know that if we want to have 0.5%, that we need to dilute it 12 times. In the WHO Biosafety Manual, you can retrieve the concentrations needed uh, the product uh, volumes needed to prepare chlorine at 0.1% and 0.5%, because depending on the product you use, taps, granules, powder, you need to have different starting volumes. Chloramine is chlorine, but um, it has a very slow release rate. And uh, it is less inactivated by organic material. Chlorine is quickly inactivated by organic material, by debris. Chloramine less. And chloramine, this is also typical um, a French product, uh, Dakin, uh, uh, Cooper Stabilisé, are products which are, in fact, antiseptics, eh? whereas the uh, Eau de Javel is the um, uh, uh, disinfectant product. It's, um, as an antiseptic, it's not on the WHO uh, um, essential medicine list. Pay attention to stability. Chlorine um, will be inactivated by sunlight. It will evaporate in heat and even if you use hot water for preparation, you can generate uh, uh, chlorine 
um, evaporation in the air, which is toxic. It will be destroyed in sunlight, so use a non-transparent container. Prepare daily fresh solutions. Remind it is inactivated by soap and debris. That's why you need first to clean before you can use it, as with many uh, disinfectants. It is very sensitive to humidity. The powder can turn yellow green and means that it is uh, completely destroyed by water. And it is, of course, irritating for the skin and the membranes. Uh, 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 please have glasses or goggles and uh, a mask when you manipulate chlorine. Um, in this booklet, there are also for, I said it is interesting for writing procedures, detailed description on how you need to make the appropriate solutions of chlorine. What we see in the field is there is a tendency to have too high concentrations of chlorine uh, with all effect of corrosion and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, dangerous situation as a consequence. And the booklet from Engender Health really gives nice templates which you can use to explain the healthcare worker in charge how to make the dilution. And there are also chlorine releasing tablets. Um, and especially if they are in blisters like this, it's far more easy for preparation. They are a little bit more expensive, but it's far more easy um, um, to use this tablets for preparation of the um, uh, um, required um, uh, diluted solution. These are two pictures from the field. Here you see the bleach in a non-transparent -trans vial. It is not, not done. Here you see the Javel. Uh, um, uh, this is French-speaking country. Also in a transparent file, but you also see that this file, this container, is not a container used for medical purposes. This is just a recycled soft drink container. And we come back on, on, on this uh, 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 practice because this is PET. This is not like this um, 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 high resistant plastic and it can have all kind of consequences amongst other very quick built up from um, uh, biofilm. We already discussed Semmelweis. I think now it's the third time that we show this uh, 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 picture, but think about what is happening here. Should is using chlorine as an antiseptic and in fact chlorine is not an antiseptic if you use it in too high concentrations uh, for instance here this is guinea for the ebola epidemic and this is chlorine 0.05 percent if you use it in too high concentrations you will have um, a small lesions of the skin huh? I like this uh, hand washing station because it has here a command with the foot instead of um, a high touch uh, tap, plastic tap. And this is production of, this is a, a machine that makes electrolysis that you can produce the chlorine yourself starting, uh, um, this is a large electrode, and starting with a salt, simple salt, by electrolysis, one can prepare here, for instance, 200 liter of chlorine uh, uh, a solution overnight. Uh, I'm not in favor of this equipment. It's very expensive, and I think you can better use the tablets 
especially the blister um, uh, uh, tablets, because it's it's expensive and also everything around this machine is susceptible to corrosion. Here, for instance, you see here are the vials. They stand there to be filled, but you see the door is completely full of corrosion. Sometimes you even see the, 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 the cupboards and the, the beds, which are uh, corroded by the chlorine. Um, by the way, here, this is a hospital in Benin, where we had a kind of a plan to assure that chlorine in the ward, because these are 20 liter vials recycled from palm oil, uh, uh, with one 20 liter vial, some parts they can do one week, but to avoid that they should have the vial there for one week, we made an alternation on Monday, only blue colored um, and, um, and vials can be present in the ward on Tuesday, yellow and so on, alternating so that we can, upon just doing the ward round, see that the ward has not expired chlorine in place. This is a slide from Anne again, eh? and just when using chlorine, why should we do, just remember, why should we do all this rinsing, eh? cleaning, rinsing, chlorine and rinsing. Just think about why we need to rinse and to clean here and here and here. And there is a reason for it. Eh? Chlorine. Good, Marianne, so far, no questions? Good. Then we Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? There are yeah. two questions, indeed. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, good Busai, morning. you can talk. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from the last uh, slide, before this slide, you, you are showing, yes, basic disinfection. And in that basic disinfection, I can see that we have detergents with a disinfectant, which is a chlorine, Jaffe, plus a detergent. And we are saying that uh, probably soap can deactivate the, 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 the chlorine. So how is the combination? I, I'm not that being clear about that one. Um, From the previous slide, that soap can deactivate the, the chlorine. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yes, and indeed. now we're from basic disinfection. Now we now have detergent and the disinfectant. Yeah. So basically, one of the principles is never mix antiseptics, eh? never and disinfectants. Never mix the product, and never mix them um, with uh, uh, soap. Uh, um, 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 for instance. And the other principle is no disinfection before cleaning. Okay. Because cleaning also already reduce the bacterial load by 100. Okay. So first cleaning and all organic materials that are okay. on, the, on, on, on the surface, they can inactivate the okay. disinfectant. Other two reasons, first, to clean. Okay. But okay. if you clean, you can have, you clean with the detergent, okay. with the soap, but okay. we know that soap residues can interact with chlorine. Okay. So we clean and then we rinse. Oh, it's okay. Okay. And then okay. we apply chlorine, okay. but chlorine, as a residue, it stays on the, on, 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 on the bench or it stays on the surface and it is corrosive. So okay. that's why after the chlorine, we need to rinse the rests away. Okay. Good? Okay. Yeah. yeah, my second question, how, yeah. can we uh, how can we differentiate between disinfection and decontamination? 
Um, I, I would like, um, uh, Anya, are you still still around? Uh, okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm yeah, here. because there are different mm -hmm. definitions for it. Can can you help here, or or because we need to to make sure that we yeah. are aligned. Huh? Um, the contamination. I don't use the word much. It's um, it's for instance the, the title of the guideline of WHO. Basically, it means um, it's a broader term to say that you remove microorganisms, um, but it doesn't specify if you go for basic disinfection or or high disinfection. It's the action of decontaminating something, taking away, uh, reducing the load of microorganisms. So it, it's a yeah. bit uh, less defined. But I will look it up, and the definition is in the guidelines. So I will look it and feedback to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. Because uh, also I, I I agree to not to use the word decontamination because it has many many uh, connotations. In fact, okay. Other questions? Yes. Um, there is a question from Murak Sayan. If you could give an example of an antiseptic soap. An antiseptic soap. Um, so it is a soap in which is an antiseptic. Um, there are soaps which are, and, and, and I will show later on, um, um, in which, for instance, chlorhexidine is uh, uh, to which chlorhexidine is added. Um, there are soaps um, 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 or soaps, even soap products, which consist of quaternary ammonium compounds. And the betadine soap, eh, which is yeah, the betadine soap, yeah. Surgical hand preparation. Yeah. Francesca says Dettol soap. Dettol soap too. Dettol um, was originally marketed as a disinfectant, eh, but it is now has also applications uh, for the skin and mucous membranes, indeed. Okay, thank you, yeah. Then the okay. one more question. From Gael, what is the most stable form of chlorine? The most stable form, um, um, either the, the most stable form or the granules, in fact. The granules, which um, um, you can, they, they are also porous, they can absorb. They have the longest shelf life. And next you have the taps, uh, the taps, and the powder, and for the solution, the one that is prepared, the javel or bleach, 15 degrees or 5% is the most stable one. Um, they have the inconvenience, if you did, of, of course, of being uh, 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 heavier. If you, you buy a, a javel for a hospital, when, and, and when you buy it in liquid, you need to buy high quantities, which that is a high transportation cost. That's another advantage of the taps. But there is also chlorine in concentrations of 48%, but it is less stable. Paradoxically, it is less stable than the uh, Javel at, and the bleach at 5%. So for the liquid, the 5%, is the most stable one, but as a product, the granules and the taps um, um, are more stable when they are well protected and have a longer shelf life than the Javel. Okay. Good, yeah. And a small comment, it's 10 to 9. Uh, so we know... It's 10 to 9, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, but it's a small but important comment, Marianne. Yeah, I'm just meaning that we have to keep an eye on the time, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Eh? Alcohol, 10 minutes, one, uh, 10 seconds, one minute. Okay, it's an it's, uh, um, uh, 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 active uh, uh, antiseptic of disinfectant. Just remember that methanol is not an antiseptic, and methanol is for combustion burning. Ethyl alcohol. It's the ethanol, which is also given in, in, in put in beverages. It's the best for non-enveloped viruses and the 
long chain alcohols, isopropyl alcohol, for instance, is better for bacteria and has some cleaning activity. Here, for instance, you see isopropyl alcohol, a general purpose cleaner. This is, in fact, a cleaner for keyboards, for computers. It's isopropyl alcohol, has cleaning activity. It's preferred for blood collection, and also in the blood transfusions, for instance, because people can ha have traveled on dusty roads, can have really uh, highly uh, dust loaded uh, skins. What means denaturation? Denaturation of alcohol means that you add ketones to corrupt the taste because the ethanol, if you are not well intended, you can use ethanol for preparation of your own wine. Eh? But when it is denaturated, the taste is completely corrupt. There are also products, sanitizers. The term sanitizer is not defined. It's mostly, or these are products for community use and they have a lower alcohol concentration. Alcohol as a product for hand hygiene has, of course, all the uh, passes by all the disadvantages of tap water. Eh? You need anti splash devices. If it is a good, best one have hands-free controls, you need soap, you need also hand drying facilities. Very important to know is that wet hands are conducive to transmission of bacteria. Mostly the concentration which is most active is between higher than 60% and lower than 90%. The product which you procure has 96% concentration and you dilute it with water. The difference between the liquid and the gel are adding of gelification product and they are done in the water phase. So you will not find the gel with the concentration higher than 80 or 85% because then you have only 15% of water. It's difficult to make a gel. You add glycerol to avoid skin to be too dry, but no perfumes and no colorants because they can induce allergy. There are formulations combined with chlorhexidin or quaternary ammonium compounds on the, on the market. But alcohol-based hand rub by itself has already a very powerful uh, uh, antiseptic. As I said, all the other products, antiseptics, low-level disinfectants, have a lower spectrum of uh, 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 activity. Um, and there are many products, and this is again in gender health, it's good to use only well selected products and to use it at the concentration recommended by the manufacturer. We go one by one and I will tell you left and right something which is particular for the products. Chlorexidin is the red, mostly red solution used in its higher concentrations, one, two and four percent a surgical scrub. It's a detergent and it has a residu residual activity, means it stays active on the skin after application for six hours, making it so popular in surgery, also because it's a high activity to staphylococci. It is available in water or in alcohol scrub. Um, Gael, this must be a C, a scrub. Um, uh, in alcohol, it's called the rub. It's effective in organic material. Um, cannot be used in the genital area, but it's a good product uh, for surgery. It has very few activity on gram-negative organisms. And it is also used 
for instance, for patients, carriers uh, of staphylococci, when they go into cytostatic treatment, and then they are having chlorhexidine baths, uh, which can cause cellular resistance, unfortunately. So chlorhexidine, um, here you see some brands, maybe you, 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 you know them, uh, Hibiscrip or Savlon, when they, 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 they are combined with um, uh, um, quaternary ammonium uh, compound cetrimide. Small spectrum, mostly staphylococci, active on other um, uh, microorganisms is written here, but in real life, it's less than four gram positives. Six hours residual activity, but it is a, is a detergent that can be inactivated by hard water and is used in surgical scrub. Um, I will show you later, avoid mixtures of antiseptics, eh? but these two, one chlorhexidine and a quaternary ammonium compound are frequently uh, uh, mixed. Iodine. Iodine is also a release of oxygen, the way it works, like chlorine. There is iodine in alcohol, it's a tincture, and there is iodine in water. It does not, it's not soluble in water, but when it is put in a large carrier molecule, povidone, it can be suspended in water. It's like the beta din. Iodine tincture, iodine tincture is not recommended as it is too irritating uh, for the skin, especially for neonates. Whereas povidone iodine, as you saw, it is on WHO essential drug list. You know the betadine has advantage also to have small vials, and these are unidose um, vials. There are different concentrations. Basically, isobetadine 10% is equivalent to 1% of iodine in the alcohol uh, solution in the uh, uh, tincture. Um, here, and here I end, there's just also a slide from Anne, just to think about why is chlorhexidine preferred here, eh? because Anne wrote here, um, that skin preparation for the bundles for the um, central line associated bloodstream infection prevention, um, chlorhexidine is preferred over povidone. Why is this the case? Just think about it. And then I would close here.